Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the gamma distribution, which is commonly used in science and engineering to model skewed distributions. So we would describe x as the gamma random variable with parameters alpha and theta, where alpha is the shape parameter and theta is the scale parameter. And just recall that those could come up with different notations and different names in other resources and textbooks. The probability density function is given as follows. We're just going to sort of take it as red there. We're not going to do anything with it, but we're just going to use this as if it was coming from a formula sheet. Just sort of one remark, though, is that we have e to the power minus x divided by theta. So that's the exponential of minus x divided by theta, in other words, okay? Now, that's very important because that has implications in how we carry out our calculation. Now, the reason is that this is important is actually due to the definition of the gamma function and how we can use the gamma function in the calculations going forward. We can look at the gamma function, uh, define it as follows. The gamma function of alpha is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus x dx, okay? So you just notice the correspondence there between gamma, uh, or alpha as the input, and the power there of alpha minus 1. So if the power there is alpha minus 1, that means that we this is a gamma function in terms of alpha. Uh, you notice here we have e to the minus x, whereas in the PDF, we will, in the probability density function, we had e to the minus x divided by theta. So what we're going to need is an equivalent of this expression here, suited for e to the minus x divided by theta. Okay, so this is an alternative specification, or you could actually say it is an extension of the gamma function there. So we have, first off, let, using the definition above, this one here, the gamma function, we can divide both sides and we get 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 divided by the gamma function of alpha times x to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the minus x dx. And what we can do is a change of variable approach. Let x equal to y divided by theta, which means that dx times dy is theta to the power of minus 1. And there we can sort of say dx is equal to theta to the power of minus 1 dy. Uh, what we can do there is put in where we have x before uh, st stated as uh, y divided by theta. So we have here we have y divided by theta to the power of alpha minus 1. And there we have e to the minus y divided by theta. dx becomes theta to the power of minus 1 times dy. Okay. Now we could just sort this all out here. So we have y divided by theta to the power of y. Uh, y divided by theta to the power of alpha minus 1. That can be expressed as theta to the power of, uh, theta to the power of 1 minus alpha times y to the power of alpha minus 1. Okay. And what we could do is bring it out over this t to the power of minus 1, such that we end up with t to the power of minus alpha. Okay. Uh, we have y to the minus 1, which is what we want, and e to the minus y divided by theta, which is what we want, and dy. Okay. So we have alpha, sorry, t to the power is minus alpha here, and divided by gamma to the power of uh, gamma of alpha here, okay? So what we can do is just bring these out, both of these expressions out, okay? Uh, before the integral, actually I should have, I could have also brought that out in front of the integral because it's just a constant in x, okay? Now remember, this is equal to one, okay? And therefore, if we just bring uh, theta to the power of alpha and the gamma function of alpha to the other side, that we have the gamma function of alpha times theta to the power of alpha, and that is that expression there. So this is just an alternative specification of the gamma function, which is very useful. Okay. Now, the harmonic mean of the gamma function. Okay. So let's have a crack at this. This is fairly straightforward and quick. So it uh, let uh, a h be the harmonic mean of the gamma function, and then what we have to do is show that it is equal to theta times alpha minus 1. So if the harmonic mean is given as follows, that means that this is the key definition to start with. 1 over the harmonic mean, 1 over h, is equal to the expected value of 1 over x. So what we're looking for here is 1 over x times the PDF 
probability density function and just integrate it with respect to x. Okay, that's it there. Um, this part here we can just take out. Okay, and such that we as uh, when we have one over a, one over x times x to the power of alpha minus one, we can express it as follows: x times alpha minus one, x to the power of alpha minus one minus one times e to the minus x divided by alpha. Okay, so this expression here entirely becomes this here. The gamma function of alpha minus one times theta to the power of alpha minus one. So the input here for the gamma function is alpha minus one. So it, it's whatever this is, plus one essentially, is how we denominate the this entirely. So that's why we sort of split it out to make it explicit that this is a gamma function of alpha minus one times the theta to the power of alpha minus one. And remember our constants here. Uh, what we could do there is express the gamma function of alpha here, and that becomes alpha minus one times the gamma function of alpha minus one. Uh, we ha still over have the one over theta over here. Sorry, the uh, uh, not the one over theta. Theta to the power of alpha over here. Okay. But anyway, the gamma functions of alpha minus one they cancel out. The Alpha minus one, uh, sorry, the theta to the power of al alpha over here, that cancels out with this, so which that we are left with just theta below. So we have essentially one over h is equal to one over theta to the power, theta, one over theta to, um, times alpha minus one, okay? And what we have to do now is just invert that such that we get the harmonic mean. Lastly, we are going to look at the mode of the gamma distribution. I'm not going to spend too much time at this. What we're going to show is that it, this is also equal to theta times alpha minus 1. The probability density function of the gamma distribution with parameter theta and k, parameters theta and k, is as follows. What we want to do there is get the derivative of that and let that equal to 0. But that's a rather complicated sort of uh, proposition. So what we could do there, just to break it up into intermediate steps, is use the fact that whatever maximizes this function will also be the maximum of the log of this function. So if we can find that instead, that will sort of give us our answer using a much simpler approach. So what we're going to do is get the logarithm of this expression here. Now just as a sort of quick remark, our log laws come into play a lot here. For example, this is sort of general structure up there. So this is equal to the log of a minus, uh, plus the log of b just uh, minus the log of c. Okay. So for each of the terms, if they multiply, just add the logs. And if they divide, just subtract the log. Okay. So let's get the logs of those expressions there. So the log of this term here becomes that okay so that we're multiplying that through uh, the log of x to the power of alpha minus 1 that becomes alpha minus 1 times log of x just using the power rules there and then finally e to the minus x divided by theta that just turns when we get the log of that we get minus x divided by theta okay so we just get the derivative of that when we get the derivative of, the, of that expression there that just goes to zero and so on we can get the derivative of minus x divided by theta we get one over theta and when we get the derivative of this it is simply alpha minus one divided by x this is actually fairly straightforward differentiation so our expression becomes alpha minus one divided by x minus one or minus one over theta and what we do is we let that equal to zero, okay? So solving for x, we should get theta times alpha minus one. Now there's just, that's really the answer. That's really as far as we need to go. There's actually the correct matter of the second derivative test, which needs to be looked at. Uh, in that case, what we would do there is just get the derivative again 
the second derivative of um, this expression here. Just let it solve through. But really, uh, we have to show that that is less than or equal to zero. But it's, this is a sort of, the second derivative is usually a sort of superfluous step in the context of probability distributions because we usually assume that it is the, the shape of the probability density function has this sort of shape where it has to be a maximum. Something like that or something like that, you know, if, a, or well, I mean, like something like that. That it's also always a pos always positive, so always has to be a negative, uh, always, always has to be a maximum. But anyway, you can just work that through and sort of see what you get there, you know. All right. 